them. Thank you. Thank you. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Shakol Miyad Ubaro. Live it's good. Now we're live on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook. It's good. Hashem is good and Hashem is helping us to survive, to hold on, to achieve all the great things that we believe and we want to achieve. And how amazing it is that uh, from, the, from the hardest hours, from the most difficult times in the world, a person can uh, can find himself suddenly connected and surrounded with friends. It's amazing. So today, Bo Hashem, we're doing this uh, Instagram live as well, along with YouTube and Facebook. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. Every time that um, that we have this opportunity to reach out to more souls audience but uh, basically holy souls friends of ours so for me it's the best news in the world there is nothing that I'm more happy with than that the creator is very very um, kind to open those outlets for us I wanted to tell you a certain story that some of my students for sure remember that I already taught in the past um, once or twice or maybe even three times. This is um, a very important story like with a very, very deep message and um, and I'm very very grateful to have this um, merit from heaven to to feel very connected and to to know that that I experienced similar things to this amazing hero that uh, this story is told about. And it's written in the Zohar Kadosh, and you know the Zohar is the book that's been written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, but not only Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai himself, just also few of his main students or friends. And why am I saying friends? And also for me, it's very hard to call my students students because I consider them as my friends. And why am I saying that they were his friends? Maybe for him it was not hard to call his students students. They were all crowning him as their rabbi with no doubt. Like they were praising him to be like the seventh day to all regular mundane days of the week. And they crowned him to, to be the greatest one of them all. So like for sure that they appreciate them and for sure that I mean, for sure that they appreciated him and for sure that he was their rabbi, but still he was considering them as his friends. And why? Because that all their group that they were sitting and learning together was called the Hebraya Kadisha, the holy group of friends. Like Hebraya, it's from the word Chavirim, friends, in the holy language of, of the Hebrews. So in the Zohar Kadosh, in Parashat Mishpatim, Rabbi Shimon, uh, the, the, the Zohar is telling us about one of the friends of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And that friend, his name is the Saba Kadisha, the Holy Grandpa. And Saba is, is a word for honorable person. Like he was the honorable, holy man, the elder one. And over there, this righteous man, the Saba, 
that some righteous people during the later generations said that it might have been Elijah the prophet that was revealing himself to to that holy group and telling them stories but I'm not sure that it was Elijah the prophet it's his name was mentioned as Saba Kadisha the holy grandpa and we'll stick to that I feel comfortable enough to to call him gr grandpa and um, he started to open up some secrets that never been revealed before to to his friends and while interpreting and explaining verses in the parasha of Mishpatim and trials I think you call it in English and he started to open up knowledge and information about reincarnation, about the secrets of how souls are coming down to this world over and over in different bodies, playing different roles and, and he found sources from the verses to explain that, to bring evidence and proofs for the fact that really different lifetimes souls are coming to different lifetimes in on on earth to this to this place and he explained and brought evidence for that now while he's getting deeper and deeper into those secrets in certain times he stopped and and started crying and the Zohar is is describing him like stopping his speech and it's like a camera that is videoing this scene that the righteous ones are sitting together in that cave all gathered as one and listening to those holy words that are coming out from the mouth of that righteous one and suddenly he stops and bursts in tears and, and crying and then he's continuing and again open another deeper layer of, 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 of wisdom and ancient secrets that are telling and revealing and opening our eyes for, for the later, for the future generations to know that really souls are coming back in different ways and different forms and dressing different bodies and, and, and related to, to, to certain souls that they were attached to in different lifetimes but in opposite roles and, and, and with that intention to achieve completion and to fix it all and to build something together in the next generation. But every once in a while while he's explaining and, and revealing that deep knowledge, so he stops and, and starts crying. And with those breaks that he's, that he's experiencing, finding it hard to open and to explain and to tell more and more, so he also opens his heart and explains exactly what happens and, and why is he stopping and why is he crying. And in a certain uh, place he starts screaming and crying to heaven and he's saying, Oi, 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 what have I done? Why did I went so far? Why did I swim till the till the middle of the ocean and found myself here with no with no uh, with no rope to come back with no boat to rescue me from and the waves are just getting higher and higher and and the storm is surrounding me from from all directions and then he's saying but i must continue i must continue and i i don't have a choice and I started to, to tell the secret, so I must continue. And then he, like, get into the next stage and opens more secrets and, and get into more details and revealing more inner depth of, 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 of wisdom and knowledge, ancient knowledge that never been revealed before. And then he moves on and then again, been stopped and starts screaming. What have you done to yourself, you foolish old person? You don't know that it's risky, that it's dangerous, 
Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai would never do something like that to risk himself, to throw himself into the depths of the sea without a life uh, like the, that like, uh, suit to protect him and without the without a bow to rescue him, without the, the right equipment and and he's keep on swimming deeper and deeper into into the sea of wisdom to reveal to the next generations the secrets that were hidden until then. And I'm I feel very connected to that because I see myself as as that swimmer, as that as that lifeguard that 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 must deliver certain news, that must bring out certain wisdom that is so needed, that is so also hidden in our generation. And many times we're finding ourselves alone. And why am I saying we and I'm not saying I? Because my family and I are are on a mission here in the US and out of our homeland and and we're just like doing the best that we can and and reaching out to thousands of souls and and it's amazing and it's not only us because with no doubt we are surrounded with very good friends and I have friends that are working with me in the project that with no doubt those people are very dedicated and 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 holding in one page with us and uh, and we appreciate that but the tests are not simple and the fact that the waves are growing and getting higher and higher and that the darkness is is like blocking your eyesight and your ability to see and you find yourself crying and you find yourself screaming in the end of the day it doesn't stop us from accomplishing and continuing that journey that we accepted and and took on ourselves the main thing that i'm doing and that we are doing in our fantastic project is to remind the lost souls of Israel who they are, their real identity. Today, a friend sent me a message, a friend that lives in Africa, and they're holding a very interesting tradition, and they are with no doubt connected to the Israeli roots, and, and, and they have they have tradition and and he wrote to me in his message it i like i'm so happy to be jewish and i so i i answered to him back i answered you're not you're not jewish but tell me from which tribe you are from and then he said we're from the tribe of god god was one of the children of Jacob, one of the brothers of Judah, Judah. The Jewish people are named Jewish because they're the children of Judah, one of the holy tribes. And the children of God, they will be named Gadim or Gadim, but they're not Jewish. This is something very important and very deep and that can clarify and solve a lot of issues and problems in the minds of my friends and therefore I'll explain it a little bit. Today the main group of people that are leading the Israeli nation in a way even though the Israeli nation is separated and 10 of our uh, 12 tribes are lost and they lost their identity and most of them doesn't even know that they are Israelis maybe have some kind of very uh, vague memory of something ancient and they're gonna call themselves the real Hebrews or Israelites or whatever all those names but in reality they don't really know who they are and they haven't kept the tradition as been given to them in the in the ancient time 
And therefore, the Jewish people that have been chosen by the Creator to be those ones to hold, to be able to hold the Bible and to keep um, um, uh, being observant and, and following the rules of the Bible, and we enjoyed the wisdom of all the righteous people of the generation of the Tanaim and the Moraim in the time of the Second Temple. All the oral Torah that had been given to us, the Torah Shebaal Peh that had been written in the Mishnayot and in the Talmud, the Gemarot. And for that, by that merit and by the merit of righteous Jewish people that were able to keep on learning in years of of, of pain in years of, of decrees, in years of war, years of poverty under different governments and under um, and under um, torture and pain and, and years of suffering, those amazing people were able to keep the torch of Judaism and the light of the Torah that had been given to the wide nation of Israel, to the whole 12 tribe. And therefore, many people from the lost tribes are desiring to connect themselves to the Jewish people. And that's a very logic thing that we can understand and relate to. You want to enjoy something and you see a source of light and you want to connect yourself to that source and you want to become part of it, so you desire to be Jewish. But in reality, the tribes were also divided and different when all the nation of Israel were still united and bonded. There were certain differences and dividings between the tribes. For an example, the tribes would never marry except of very like specific occasions, situations, unique ones and rare ones, they wouldn't get married with each other. They wouldn't mix. The children of God would go and marry the daughters, the, the, the boys, the men will marry the women of the, that same tribe. The children of Judah, the Jewish ones, they would marry those ones from, from the Jewish. Even on the Kohanim and the Leviim, that today they are part of the Israeli nation, there are like recommendations that they will marry with each other, that the Levites and the Kohanim will get married within themselves, and the Yehudim, the Israelis, the Jewish, will get married with themselves. It's better that way. And this is something that can solve a lot of issues in the minds of all those truth seekers, those amazing and holy people that are desiring the truth with all their heart, but they find it very hard to convert, to become Jewish. And like, so now I'll tell you, you don't need to do that. <laughs> you don't need to convert. You don't need to convert to accomplish what your heart desire. You don't need to become Jewish for that cause. You can stay who you are and you can connect yourself to the Creator by just being a believer, a person of faith, a true believer. When you desire the Creator and you pray to Him and you call Him and you ask for His help and you learn His wisdom and you try to attach yourself to 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 His commandments, to, to His will, and you do it in the right and proper way, not by imitating other people and trying to follow other people and, 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 and disrespecting yourself, just by trying to connect yourself to the, to the source of, of your spirit, to that amazing person that you are, by doing that, you don't need to, to change your, your role in life. You don't need to become someone that you're not. And I think that this is a very important message. I think that this is a very, very powerful advice for all of us to know 
Like if you're Jewish, so it's amazing, so you're Jewish, it's great. But if you're from a, a different tribe, or that you're not sure from which tribe you are, but you feel that from inside there is a very strong passion, a flaming fire that is, that is shining from within your heart, and, and it's telling you that you're part of the Israeli nation, and you want to be, belong to the Israeli nation, you don't need to become Jewish for that. Like, everything is perfect, and everything is good, and you just need to find your way to know the Creator in a better way and, 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 and to try to bring your mind into that place of connecting yourself from an honest place in a very honest and, and mature way. And the way to do it in, by becoming something that you, that you are not. I think that today in our generation, forgive me for, for playing with my phone here, but there are some things I need to do. So, um, so the way to really connect yourself spiritually to the Creator and really to find the right way to connect yourself, um, um, it needs to be done by the most honest and simple way that, that every person can reach. One second, excuse me for the interruption. blessing that been given to every individual is that we have an inner an inner system of senses and we have our awareness and our power to grasp and to understand the message that the creator is sending to every individual and individual even if the goal let's let's compare it now to 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 the, to the globe, to a map. We all need to get to a certain direction. We all need to get to Mount Zion. We all want to be there in the holy mountain, in the holy city of Jerusalem. Wonderful, perfect, and great. Now, I am now located in New York. You are now located in, in, I'm in New York. You are in Denmark. Another friend of ours is in in, in London, in the UK, a third person is in Paris, in, in, in France, another one is in Africa, another person is in Syria, and one is in Siberia, in Russia. We all need to get to the same central point, the holy city of Jerusalem. Our directions are totally different. Even though that we're going all to the same place, we all need to go in different directions and even maybe in the opposite directions. Means if we all want to become holy, if we all need to be pure and wants to achieve certain spiritual achievement, we all need to work on our inner understandings. We need to reach a certain point that will fix ourselves. But I need to work on certain things that you already fixed. And you need to work on other things that me, I like fixed them a few years ago. And you have different issues and your friend has others. And every one of us must work on himself to fix and clean himself and build himself, prepare himself to that success that we desire all to reach to that holy place, the holy city of Jerusalem, the mountain of Zion. All right, for an example. So for that, I will need to go all the way to the right and you will need to go all the way to the left. I will need to go to the east and you'll have to go to the west. Everyone will have to go in the, in the unique path to bring himself from his own location, from the place that he is in, to that desirable point, to the heart of the world. Now all of us together must help each other to find our own ways. Like means that every individual will find his own way 
that fits to him, that will complete him, that will heal him. Now, if let's say I'm going through something and I want to tell you that you need to be strong, I can talk to you about myself, but really your life mission today is not to be strong at all. Today you need to learn how to be soft, how to be nice, how to be kind. And I will tell you, no, do you need to go and to fight for yourself and you need to do this and you have to do that and you must do that. But you, you're in a different place completely. You are in a different time zone. You're going through different things. I have issues with this. You have issues with that. I have issues with myself. You have issues with your parents. Me, I don't have issues with my parents. Every person is different. So therefore, every person in this world must understand that he should find the inner message that he's receiving from the Creator. Every single one of us must find his own path and must find his own way. So for you, for an example, a person that desires the Creator and finds himself that he's not part of the Jewish nation and he feels like, oh, I want to be part of them, I want to be connected to them, I want to join them, but I cannot because I'm not accepted, they're not welcoming me, they don't let me into their synagogue, they don't let me in their community, whatever. I tell you, listen, brother, you are my brother from a different tribe. You are our brother, but you are located in a different direction and you need to go in the opposite way. You cannot flow with us. If you're going to flow with us right now, you're not going to achieve what that we're going to achieve. And I'm not talking about nations. I'm not telling you you don't need to be Jewish. Even inside Judaism you have different sections and you have different people and every individual is unique and special and different than others and every one of us must be who we are. I have people that if they're going to hear about the way that I am serving the Creator, they're going to open their eyes like that. They're going to say, wow, really? Are you serious? I never thought that that's the right path. I never knew. No one told me. And I know that that's the most perfect way for me to serve. I know I found it after years of yearning and desiring and praying and working hard. And I found a certain way, a certain method that works for me. And I found it and I know and I have my evidence and I have, and I have my, 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 my mind is already clarified what's the real path, what's the right way for me and I'm walking in it and for years I'm harvesting success while trying and working in, in that way and another person for him it's a destruction. Simple example, one person for him he read in the books or that his rabbi taught him that he needs to wake up early every morning. An advice for life, wake up every morning before of dawn, go to the synagogue, before of that go to the mikveh, go and pray early. Another person that has a different family status, that has a different obligation during his day, that his mind is working differently, that the way that his blood and his digestion system is working differently, is not able to wake up early. Like he will go with a migraine, with a crazy headache for hours because he woke up at 5 a.m. For him, the best time to wake up, for him to be strong and stable and happy and, and, and powerful, it's to wake up around 8, around 9. So now you're going to tell him you're doing something wrong. If he will try to walk in your path and to wake up at 5 a.m., you killed him. You literally took years of his life away from him. He will lose his happiness and he will become an angry person and his mind won't be clear and he won't be able to focus not in the prayer and not in the learning and he won't be able to bring Panasa money for his family and nothing gonna work like he desired and nothing gonna bring him to his success. So how will he know if the holy book is saying that you need to wake up early you need to learn that sometimes you should take the advice from the book and that there are some advice that you need to put aside. And how are you going to know that? Only by counting on your inner senses. 
only by counting on yourself, only by connecting yourself to your mind, to your awareness, to your inner ears, to listen to your inner voice and to connect yourself to the light that is shining from within, to your inner voice that is telling you those mornings are too hard for you. That way is not working for you. And by that you make adjustments. By that you create a certain path for yourself that will be the right one for you. So if you're not Jewish, the method for you is not necessarily that you need to convert. You might be from a different tribe. You, and, and the fact that you're not Jewish doesn't mean that you're out. Because like if there are Jewish people today that are thinking to themselves that they are better than their siblings that belongs to different tribes because that they are not Jewish. So like that's a 100% mistake. If there were 12 brothers sitting on the same table and one of them survived and he was the one that his name was famous in the whole wide world as the, the one that carried the flag. He was the one to, to, to accomplish the journey till the end. Now, does it make it better than his siblings? Does it make it better? Maybe the, the prayers of his siblings brought him to his success. Maybe the sacrifice that they took upon themselves brought him to his success, to his completion. Maybe the, 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 uh, the fact that he succeeded was only because that he was the, the, the weakest one of them all. Maybe the fact that he was so weak brought the Creator to protect him. For an example, I'll give you, for you to understand it. Let's say that now you're going to take me. I gave that example as well once in a class. Take me now and put me in the middle of Saturday afternoon in Miami Beach. On the beach, on the, on the sea line. Now I'm standing over there, surrounded by thousands of people with bathing suits, half naked, in and out from the sea. Like, what's going to happen to me? I'll tell you. Nothing going to happen to me. No damage going to happen to me. Why? Because I will know 100% that I'm not belong there. I will know that I don't want to stay there. And I will do the best that I can to find myself my way out from that place. Like I'm, I'm just going to find the quickest way out. And, and that's going to be the story of me, Dro Moshe Kasuto, in Miami Beach in Saturday afternoon. I, like noon, noon time. I, like I, I won't have anything to do there. The maximum, if someone will talk to me, I'll see how I can help him to take him with me out from that place. Like, but I won't be stuck over there. But take for an example, a 17 years old Hasid, a from from birth, a religious kid from, um, from, from a Jewish community, the most strict and holy and, 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 and strongest one of them all and take him out after never being in the beach in his life, never seeing those sights in his life, always sitting every day and memorizing books by heart and all his eyes and ears are all pure and holy, put him in that beach for five minutes and after those five minutes, bring him back to the yeshiva, bring him back to the synagogue, bring him back to that place that he belongs to. What's going to happen to him? I'll tell you. He will lose his mind. He will lose his mind completely because those five minutes will damage him so badly that he won't be able to recover. Why he won't be able to recover? Because he's not built for those things. Because for him it's still not clear what's going on in this messed up world. He doesn't have, he never developed that armor that I developed with my life experience. He doesn't know who he is. He still doesn't recognize who he is and what his mission is. And if he will find himself like that for five minutes in Miami Beach in front of thousands of half-naked people, he will lose his mind. He won't be able to focus after it in the holy books. He won't be able to learn. He won't be able to, to accomplish those wonderful things that he that he been uh, 
how you say that, that that was his destiny uh, to sit and learn. He won't be able to continue with it. Why? Because that he is not as strong, as powerful to hold on in the tests of life. So because that he's so fragile and because that he's so gentle and because that he doesn't have the power to hold on into the war of exile and to go through fire and water, darkness and cold and heat and light and, and, and fogs and waves and, and storms and hurricanes and, 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 and tornadoes of life and earthquakes and, and floods and, and thunders and, and lightnings and rain and, and the rest of the difficulties that we are going through on daily basis. For that, the Creator preserved him in cotton and he is sitting guarded and safe and well and well protected over there, sitting between four walls of the synagogue or the Beit Midrash. And over there he is able to learn and to pray because he doesn't have the strength to survive and to hold on outside. But the stronger ones are able to go and to cross the desert barefoot. They're able to go into the fire and into the stormy winds and into the water in, in times of storm and into places with plagues and, and droughts and, and, th and, 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 and poverty and, and all kinds of, of pain, sorrow and, and, and challenges and to survive. So if a person that today holds himself as Jewish and he thinks to himself that he's better than his siblings that are out there only because that he is able to sit and learn Torah. You know what's the reason that you're sitting and learning Torah? There is only one reason, because your mother taught you and your father forced you to sit and learn Torah. You're not doing it because you're an angel. You're doing it because you're born into a certain community with certain reality that is surrounding you. And that reality and that surrounding set and, set and and forced your destiny to sit and learn Torah. It doesn't make you better than someone that is not learning Torah. The people that are out there, the holy people of our nation that belongs to different tribes and still doing even the most tiniest things out there or even if they're not aware at all to their greatness and to their spiritual connection they are or as holy as us or maybe even more and we don't know and they themselves don't know and when I say they themselves don't know I mean that you yourself don't know you don't know who you are you don't have a clue who you are you don't have no understanding about the greatness of your soul you don't have no power of understanding what are the qualities that are installed in your spirit, in your soul? You are so amazing and so gorgeous and so beautiful and so powerful and so fantastic and you don't know anything about it. And it's time for you to know that. It's time for you to know and to recognize the fact that you don't have a clue who you are and that you don't understand the greatness and the power and the true potential of your soul. And on that, you need to put all your effort, all the efforts of your life to find who you really are. And that's our mission, to recognize our true selves and to count on our inner senses and to count on them. That's what it means to believe in ourselves and to connect ourselves to who we are and to recognize who we are and to be appreciative about it means to appreciate who that you find that you are. Even if you find it hard to appreciate, even if you find it hard to understand. For an example, there's going to be a person that likes to play basketball and he cannot understand what's the greatness in that, like what's so great, like I'm 
all all the re like I'm exactly like all the rest of those guys just thinking all day long about basketball 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 gas basketball all right so like what's the what what makes it so great what that makes it so great is that I have a friend in Israel that for many years he was a very successful basketball player and he was playing even for the NBA here in the US and after a while he realized that he does not fulfilling the mission that had been set for him and he decided to instead of investing all his life in playing basketball for himself he decided to go and teach young kids that desire to play basketball that you can play basketball with your soul as well with your spirit as well and he started to and he started to make camps and 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 um, and groups for children and he was sitting with those kids and playing basketball with them and after finishing playing with them in the afternoon he would sit with them and talk to them and put some sense into their minds and was educating them and providing knowledge and wisdom to those souls and how to play with the ball and how to play basketball he taught them how to be human beings and today that amazing person has thousands of students that will come to him and will take advice and will learn a lesson from him and will find ways through his guidings and through his teachings to become better people and he found the basketball to be a tool for him to reach out to the hearts of people that wouldn't talk to him on any spiritual topic and wouldn't get inside with him into no emotional level if he wouldn't be such a great basketball player they connected themselves to him only through basketball but he used that as a tool as a stage for 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 to access to the hearts of those amazing people now you have your talents and you have your hobbies and you have things that you've been blessed with and there is no problem for you to recognize your your qualities and your talents there is no real problem for you to know who you are and what you're good at you know that you like your old um, record player patif patiphone and that you like old black and white videos films um, of kojak and that you like uh, jazz music and that you are amazing with rap and you know how to rhyme and you're able to to make rap battles with people in the streets and you're not afraid from competitions and you know that you know how to run and you have your understandings that you know what is good for your health and what is not and you're a vegetarian and you have a lot of knowledge about gluten and vitamins and you're against vaccines or like whatever no matter who you are you have those gifts and even if it's only to drive on your skateboard and even if it's to windsurf and even if it's to paint with your watercolors you don't know that through that if you will look for the godliness that is treasured in those talents you can access into the hearts of thousands of other people that their mind is also designed by the creator to have passion to the same topics that you have and we just need to stop criticizing and breaking our own spirits all day long that's the main thing that we should do we should stop fighting with ourselves every single day from the morning till the night 
we must stop breaking our own spirits with this horrible criticism. We are judging and breaking our spirits instead of building and supporting ourselves. And that is our failure. That is our mistake. We must be strong. We must be strong to find and recognize the qualities of our spirits and to nurture them and to grow with them and to make them shine out to the world and to make other people understand that it is the best thing in the world to be who that they are, who that the Creator made them to be. And for that we need to fight. For that we need to go out to a war to help every person on earth to be that person that he believes that he should be. Not to be scared to express his feelings and his emotions and not to be scared and to be ashamed of how he looks on, or how he sounds. A person now will go in the street and he can't feel comfortable with his look because of the color of his skin or because of how his accent will sound. It's crazy. That sickness. It's so far from the real desire of the Creator that created us all in His form and in His shape and put holy souls, godly souls, portion of heaven inside of us. We're all holy chariots that are carrying the Creator's light with us in our life's journey. And we need to illuminate the world with the light of faith, with the light of Emunah, out to the world with no connection to our location with no connection to our places, with no connection to who we are and who we've been created to be. We just need to use that vehicle that's been given to us for the mission that the destiny of, uh, that, that we, I don't know how to say it, we've been destined, that we have, no, come on, you can comment, you can tell me in the comments, how should I say it, that we've been, destined to something like that that's going to be the right way to say it that the destiny set for us destinated des yes destined yes i wish need to learn how to read as well english is very complex yes thank you donna thank you english is complex for people that are coming with israeli background you know i'm doing the best i can <laughs> you have mercy. Thank you so much. So, Bezat Hashem, I must tell you that we're putting a lot of effort in, uh, in providing the wisdom to the world and, and revealing it. If you would know the, 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 the journey that we, that we made, if you would understand, like, I'm sitting and talking to you in English that is not my mother's language it's 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 uh, i learned english because i sat with english speakers and helped them to understand things because i saw that they were not able to to survive and to hold on because they wanted to learn and there was no one there to teach them and we were there in the holy land of israel and they wanted to learn. And like I said, there was no one there to teach them. So I had to break my teeth and to, and, to, and to teach them with my broken Israeli English. And I would sit with them for hours and translate and translating classes to them and, and would tell them. And in the beginning, we were just me and one person that I wish that he will remember one day that I uh, gave him so much, but uh, probably he won't, like many others that uh, keep on forgetting where they received their blessing from. And after a while, another person came and joined us, and we sat every day, three people. And after a while, it became a class, and we were sitting seven people every day and learning, and that class just grow and grow. And one day I found myself speaking in front of 50 people. Like every day we had more than 30 people. And, and like one day I remember that I came to class and like it was packed. There were more than 50 people that came to hear my lecture. People from Mir Yeshiva, from Osamea, from, 
from Zvil Yeshiva, like tens of people that came to hear the class. And it was a, it was a life-changing experience for me. And again, like I'm telling you, see where I learned this broken English that suddenly became to be a tool in my hand today to speak to thousands of people in a language that is foreign to me, like, like a different country, like it's a foreign language for me. Only because that I was watching all the silly Hollywood movies and that I was secular and in the culture that I grew up in television and video and movies and and music of of that came from from Europe and from the US was was something that we've been exposed to so from that impure source I learned my English and today this language is being used by me as a tool to save lives of people and thousands of people every day are enjoying this content that the Creator gave me the power to create. So you can see by that how it's okay for you to use the blessings that you've been blessed with and to service and to serve and to do good things for the Creator's sake and for our nation's sake, and for the sake of the whole wide world, for everyone to come closer to the Creator. And one will use his skills of playing baseball, and one will use his skills of jumping and, and running and playing and dancing with hula hoops and break dancing and making, making cartoons and animations and, and even if you work in the bank, even if you're a clerk, even if you're a waiter in the, in the restaurant, even if you're just a crazy person that doesn't have anything else to do with his life and always writing silly comments on YouTube. In any situation, you need to use your talents and to try to help other people to smile to everyone and to be nice and to show that the light of the Creator can shine in any place, no matter where you are at. If you're in Africa, if you're in Europe, if you're in Australia, if you are in Egypt, if you are in Russia, if you are in, in China, in Japan. Today I answered a message to a friend that lives in Japan, that she's Jewish and married to a Japanese man. And she's Jewish and she believes that she's Jewish and she has her evidence for her Judaism and there's no place for her to convert over there in Japan like for people to accept her Judaism she knows that she's Jewish but she doesn't have the documents or whatever she's in Japan like now face reality what can she do what can she do she can believe in the Creator she can believe and she can pray and she can do her thing and she can keep on amazing doing making her amazing halot in the eve of shabbat from her home with her amazing family that she lives with in japan and she needs to keep on shining and revealing the light that is shining from her soul within out to the surroundings that are surrounding her and to bless them with her wisdom and with her sensitivity and with the great qualities that she's been blessed with and also to go and bless the world in any possible way and to enjoy the beauty that is served in front of our eyes and you need to do it and I need to do it and they need to do it and we all need to do it as one and to smile to each other I'm asking you guys to help us to support our activities in any possible way that you can. If it's financially to donate even small amount under the videos, we most of the time are able to put the links for a donate button to support us if it's through PayPal or our website. And it's a huge help and we need that help. We need your support. And if you're not able 
and for now to support financially our amazing work it's also amazing when you share and you post the links on different pages and share it with your friends to share the content with others is with no doubt an act of charity and it's a life-saving thing and many people's life been saved and been improved by this wonderful content that we're creating and making and you should be those holy messengers to share it with the world so thank you so much i appreciate greatly your friendship and my wife and all of our family and also the rest of the Muna project team we are very appreciative to your friendship and to your support and may the creator bless us all as one and that the creator will help us Bezat Hashem, to succeed and to go into amazing places with our happiness and with the light that is shining from within our own souls thank you and may the Creator bless us all. Amen.